Welcome to Electron Online, and here's our sixth and final example of that very same circuit on how you can solve that. In this case, we're going to use the Norton theorem to solve that circuit. The way the Norton theorem works is we take this part of the circuit right here, the one that feeds the what we would call the load impedance through which we're trying to find the current. We're taking that circuit and we're going to turn that into this portion of the circuit. So we have a source current and we have a, a source impedance, so to speak, and the source impedance is in parallel with the source current. So then we take these, the load right here, which consists of our capacitor with and then capacitive inductance of minus J4 and have a resistor of 3 ohms. And so this would then be the load source, or I should say this is the, the load impedance, and we're trying to find the current through the load impedance I2, which is the same as the I2 over here. So what we need to do is we need to find the, the Norton impedance and we have to find the Norton current. To find the Norton impedance, we find it in the exact same way as we do the Thevenin impedance. We take the, the, the load impedance, we remove the load impedance, so we have an open right here. We replace the source voltage by simply a short and we remove the current and turn the current source and we make that an open and we leave everything else alone and so you can see that in this case again that the impedance the, what we now call the Norton impedance which is the same as the Thevenin impedance is simply the impedance between these two terminals which is simply the impedance of the inductor right here so it means we can write that Z, Nort, uh, Z Norton the impedance Norton is equal to the impedance Thevenin which in this case is J8, which is equal to 8 with a phase angle of 90 degrees, which is what goes right here. So this becomes equal to J8. The next thing we need to do is find the Norton current. To find the Norton current, what we need to do then is we, we, we have to put back our source current, we put back our source voltage, and we take the the load, in this case the load impedance of the capacitor and the resistor, and replace it by a short. And now we're trying to figure out what the current is to that short, that will then be the Norton current. How do we do that? Well, in this case, we have to kind of use this method right here. So let's call this, um, call it current A, so I sub A, and let's call this current I sub B. And then we use kind of what we would call the nodal, yeah, the nodal method uh, to find the current through I sub n, which in this case will be I sub b. So I sub b will be equal to I sub n. And so we're going to solve for those circuits right there. What we probably could do, well, now I'm going to show you the entire way of doing this. So first, let's go ahead and sum up all the voltages around this mesh right here. So let's, let's call this the mesh, the mesh method. We're going to add up all the voltage around this mesh, and we're going to add up all the voltages around that mesh. So no voltage drop across the current source, but we do have a voltage drop across the inductor since we're going this direction. We can then say that for the first loop, or for mesh one, for mesh one, we have minus J8 multiplied times IA minus IB because IB is in the opposite direction. So it would be IA minus IB. And since we then come all the way around the loop, that should equal zero. Around the second mesh, we do the same thing. Let's start from here and go all the way around. So in that case, we have minus J8 times but in this case, we go in the same direction as IB, so we go IB minus IA. We come around here, nothing up here, and here we drop across this voltage, so it's going to be minus uh, 10 with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees, and that adds up to zero. So it's a relatively simple equation. Since we're looking for IB, and we know that IA is going to be equal to the source current right here. We can then replace this by the source current. So now we have minus J8 times IB minus the source current. Now instead of writing it like this, let's see here. Uh, no, we'll, we'll go ahead and write it like this. So we minus 5 with a phase angle of 10 degrees minus, and since I'm going to subtract this from this, I'm going to change this into minus 5 
minus j 8.66 equals 0. Uh, multiplying this, so we have uh, minus j8 times ib. There we go. Now, this multiplied times this, we have minus 5 times the phase angle of 10 degrees. And multiplying that times a minus j8, that would be a minus 8 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Let's see if I got the minus signs correct. So I have a minus here times a minus here. That gives me minus times minus, which plus 5 times 8. Yep, that looks good. And then here I'm going to say minus 5 and plus j8.66 equals 0. Okay, so remember that I sub b, what we're trying to do is going to be the Thevenin, uh, or not the Thevenin, but the Norton current. Okay, so let's multiply this out. And so now that gives us minus j8 i sub b is equal to this times this. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, we'll, we'll wait for that. The next step. So I'm going to multiply this out. So this is going to be plus 40 with a phase angle of 100 degrees. And moving this over, so this is going to be equal to a positive 5 minus j8.66. And then move this across. Uh, before we do that, let's do the next. So minus j8 i sub b is equal to this. Almost have that memorized by heart, but there's my calculator. Couldn't find my calculator. Okay, so 100 degrees. Take the cosine of that times 40, which is minus 6.95. So we're not going to subtract yet. So we have minus 6.95 for the real part, and that would be plus j, and that would be 39.39, I remember that one, that's equal to 5 minus j 8.66. Now moving this across the other side, we have minus j 8 times i sub b is equal to, that's a positive 6.95, a minus j 39.39, plus 5 minus j 8.66. If not combine that, we get minus j 8 i sub b is equal to 11.95 minus j, that would be 48.05. And then we have i sub b is equal to, when you combine this, we have 11.95. 95 squared at plus 48.05 squared equals, take the square root, that's 49.51. 49.51 with a phase angle of 48.05 divided by 11.95. Take the inverse tangent, that would be a minus 76.03. And we're going to divide that by, when we bring this over here, that would be a minus 8 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Okay, so now we can go ahead and divide one by the other. We have 49.51 divided by 8. That's, whoa, let me try this again. 49.51 divided by 8 equals, yes, that's a 6.19. So minus 6.19 with a phase angle of 76.03, 76.03, uh, minus 90, that's a minus 166.03. And then if we take this and turn it into positive, we're going to add 180 to that. So we end up with, whoa, 166.03, plus 180 is, that would be equal to a positive 6.19 with a phase angle of 13.97 degrees. Of course, this is degrees and degrees, can't forget the degrees there. That's, of course, equal to our Norton current. So now that we have our Norton impedance and we have a Norton current, we can plug that in here. So this is going to be equal to 6.19 with a phase angle of 13.97 degrees. 
and the impedance we have as well. Now, how do we find I2? How do we find the current through our load impedance, the capacitor and the resistor? Well, we're going to use what we call a current divider. We can say that I sub 2 is equal to the source current, I sub n, times the impedance in the other branch, which is Z sub n, divided by, and I'm going to take these two combined, and this is going to be what we call the load impedance, divided by the sum of the two impedances, Z sub n plus the load impedance. So in this case, this is equal to 6.19 with a phase angle of 13.97 degrees multiplied times the Norton impedance, which is going to be 8 with a phase angle of 90 degrees, divided by, in the denominator, we get J8 minus J4 plus 3. So this is equal to 6.19 with a phase angle of 13.97 degrees, multiplied times 8 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. And this is going to become 3 plus J4, which simplifies to 5 with a phase angle of 53.13 degrees. And now we can work all this out. And so this gives us 6.19 times 8 divided by 5, which is 9.90 with a phase angle of 13.97 plus 90 minus 53.13 that gives us a phase angle of 50.84 degrees. Of course, this is in terms of amps, and this would then be I sub 2, which is the current through the branch we're looking for, the capacitor and the resistor up in that circuit. So there's our sixth method. It's called the Norton theorem method. I don't like it quite as much as I like the Thevenin method because Thevenin method uses the series circuit here, equivalent circuit. The Norton, of course, uses a parallel. It may be a little bit more complicated to figure that out. Also, it's a little bit more work trying to find the current to the short here between the two terminals when the short replaces the load impedance. But it's a very valid method, and in some cases, it's also one of the easier methods to use. So now you may say, we've seen six different methods to solve the same circuit. Which method should you use? The one you like the best, or the one you're told to use. Sometimes you have no choice to say, use this method for that circuit. Um, one thing you could do if you're taking a test and you're supposed to use a particular uh, method and you get an answer, you're not sure if it's right, but you can see that and go, oh, maybe I can use a second method. And if you get the exact same answer with the second method, then you probably were correct. And that's kind of nice to do. So six different ways solving the same circuit. Now, of course, we're going to show you some ex additional examples of each different method, some of them a little bit more complicated, of course, so you can see how each of the methods then uh, is used for the various types of circuits we're going to encounter, and that's how it's done.